Well, it's a beautiful April day here in Galway on the west coast of Ireland. And, you know, us Irish people, we like to work outdoors as soon as the weather turns nice. So I thought I would show you the making of my book, Dublin in Sketches and Stories, the very sketchbooks that went into the drawing and the writing of this book over the course of two years. I think I used maybe four or five sketchbooks to do the entire book. Now, they're all Hannah Mula watercolour sketchbooks, 200 grams in weight, and they culminated in this book here. So you're going to see pretty much all of the sketches that I made for the book. The vast majority of them were done on location. And in some of them, I hadn't a clue where I was, not really being a resident of Dublin, and I hadn't been for, I don't know, three decades. So I didn't know where I was a lot of the time. But I guess I got there in the end. The reason I want to show you my sketchbooks right now is because there aren't that many books left in the first edition of Dublin and Sketches and Stories and I have no idea whether the publisher is going to reprint them or not. But you know, at the end of the day, nothing can beat seeing the sketchbooks with the original work in the flesh. Now I know this isn't in the flesh, but it's as close as I can manage for you. So. I really hope you enjoy seeing the actual ink and watercolour traces that I made sitting there on the streets of Dublin. You're looking at a pre-pandemic time when we all were drinking, eating and being merry all together. Um, little did I know that a few months after I started making the book, everything would change. And you can be sure it really did change. And it looked for a long time that the book might not get finished. And it would have been a great shame, certainly from my point of view, because I had spent so many hours sitting on my little portable stool on the streets of Dublin, chatting with the homeless guys, chatting with the passers-by, chatting with guys who had been homeless but who'd found their feet and told me about stories, told me stories about the time that they were in prison. But they'd got their lives together in the meantime, which was always nice to hear.
Well, it's not for nothing that my book is called Dublin in Sketches and Stories, because when you're an urban sketcher and you're sitting there in the street, well, you're not exactly incognito and you get an awful lot of chat from passers-by, some of which can be extremely entertaining. Not always for the right reasons. Sometimes the stories are a little bit hair-raising. Stories of having been inside or stories of, I don't know, being high. Got that a few times. Um... But I love it. I love it all. And it's part of the magic of just being out there, being on the streets, being in the open air. I never felt in any way at risk, not once. Well, apart from the time, which you'll come to later on in this little video, when I was in the middle of an altercation between the far left and the far right, outside the Doyle, which is the Houses of Parliament. In fact, that's the very building where the altercation took place just outside there on the street. There was loads of cops around, so I wasn't nervous really. I was more excited than nervous, which is a bit tragic. But other than that, no, it was cakes and nice times a lot of the time. There were long times when I was frozen to the bone and there were times when I was lonely and there were times when my drawing wasn't going right and there were times when my drawing was just too hard. I didn't like those times so much. But on the whole, it was a magical experience. I feel very lucky to have had that opportunity because I won't get another one. And I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. And now it's in print. It's published. It's in a little book that you can carry around with you. That's a great privilege to have someone actually publish your pictures and your words your mojo I'll always be grateful to my publisher for that for taking a chance on me in fact this is the very cafe where I met my publisher Connor for the first time and where he agreed to take on the project as you can see I had a lot of it done already at that stage of course we had no idea that the pandemic was coming but we got there. We got there in the end. This one of Houston Station, my goodness, this is the one I remember so clearly. This is where I began to question why I was doing this project. Why was I putting myself through it? It was more than I could bear. All that detail, it was just too much. But by the next sketch, I was sitting in a beautiful park in the warm spring sunshine. Without a complaint in the world,
Now, I would say one of the advantages to having a publisher as opposed to working on a book under your own steam is the fact that they have a deadline and they are going to lean on you to get everything done and dusted in time to hit the shelves on their schedule when they think it's the best time to do it. And so I only had April of 21 to get it finished. I think I managed to grab a few in July as well, just one or two. But I went up for a week in April and I was so lucky with the weather. The sun shone, the sun shone, there wasn't a drop of rain. And the same for the following July. I was so lucky because Dublin in the warm weather is absolutely glorious. But as a sketcher, it can't rain. This day on Francis Street outside the Guinness factory was one of the days when, well, it was a typical Irish summer day. Look how threatening that sky is. And then just a couple of days later, or even the day later, it was so hot and sunny. A book like this one isn't going to happen again. Well, not for me anyway. It required a superhuman effort of energy and concentration and above all inspiration, which I had in spades. But as an artist, you never know what you're going to want to do next. So I'm going to regard this book as my masterpiece, both in terms of the drawing and the writing. I'm very proud of it, but I can't see myself doing it again. As well as the large sketchbooks, I also have this little small one, the A5, and I use this from the very start of the project right through to the end. So there's a great variety of sketches here. So this little movie that I'm bringing you here today is, I guess it's my version of an exhibition. Hard to have an exhibition when you're a sketchbook artist. If you're very, very lucky, you'll get to publish your work in a book that people can buy and take away and enjoy not just the images, but also your stories. All those tales recounted to you firsthand by the people you met on the street. So not alone is it a really special gift for anyone who loves Dublin or who has been to Dublin, but it's a moment in time and it's capturing this glorious city in all its foibles and quirks. I think you'll like it. The pictures you've seen in these sketchbooks were all done in ink and watercolour. The vast majority of them from start to finish, right on the street where I was sitting. But the pictures themselves are only the half of it. In a way, they're only the start of it. Because how else will you hear the voices of Dubliners firsthand? The lucky ones, the not so lucky ones. I'm definitely one of the lucky ones. <laughs>